Antibiotic Susceptibility, the Kirby-Bauer Method. For this exercise, you will be inoculating three Mueller Hinton media plates with three different bacteria. You will then place five different antibiotic discs on each of the plates. To begin, label each plate with the name of the bacteria you will be inoculating it with. We will be using five different filter discs of antibiotics. In order to evenly space the discs on the plate, it is helpful to draw a template on the plate. In order to determine sensitivity in the plates, you first need to create a bacterial lawn. This is most easily done with a sterile cotton swab. Dip the swab into the broth culture. Make sure to soak the swab thoroughly with the culture. Now you will swab the plate with the cotton swab. When you do this, you need to color in the plate as if you were coloring it like a coloring book. Turn the plate 90 degrees and color it again. This will be repeated at least one to two more times until the entire plate is covered with bacteria. You may find it helpful to roll the cotton swab as you are spreading it across the plate. You will use a clean cotton swab for each of the three different bacteria. Once the lawn has been created, you are now ready to begin placing the antibiotic discs. A pair of forceps are first dipped in alcohol and then run through the Bunsen burner. Once the forceps have cooled, you can use them to obtain the filter disc. These antibiotic discs are already labeled with the name of the antibiotic as well as the concentration of antibiotic on each disc. When you place the disc onto the plate, you should place it onto one of the black dots from the template you drew. Once the antibiotic disc has touched the plate, it cannot be moved, so you should place it carefully. In order to actually grab the disc out of the dispenser, you should first push it to the side with the forceps and then turn it around and grab the disc with, at the other end with the forceps. After placing the disc on the agar, give it a gentle tap to make sure that it adheres to the surface. Try not to touch the surface of the agar with the forceps. You will repeat this procedure for each of the antibiotic discs on all three of the plates. You should use the same five antibiotics on all three of the plates. Once the antibiotic disc comes into contact with the surface of the agar, diffusion of the antibiotic will begin. This will create a concentration gradient, with the highest concentration being at the edge of the disc and the lowest concentration being the farthest from the disc. Bacteria that are sensitive to the antibiotic will not be able to grow in its presence. This will create a circle around the disc of no bacterial growth. Bacteria that are resistant to the antibiotic can grow all the way up to the edge and even sometimes on top or on the surface of the disc itself. Here, discs are being placed onto a bacterial lawn on Mueller-Hinton agar. The forceps have already been run through the Bunsen burner. Shown here is how to obtain a disc from one of the dispensers. Push the disc slightly to the side, turn the dispenser over, and grab the disc with the tip of the forceps. Place the disc, give it a small tap, and replace the lid of the plate. Try not to touch the surface of the agar with the tips of the forceps. Determining susceptibility or resistance of bacteria and measuring a zone of inhibition. The zone of inhibition is the area surrounding the filter disc in which bacteria will not grow. 
zones of inhibition must be measured. This is done simply by using a ruler. Zones of inhibition are measured using millimeters. Place the ruler on one side of the zone of inhibition right where bacteria ends growth. Then measure across or the diameter of the circle to where bacterial growth begins again. You should record this number in the table in your lab manual. For this bacteria, there was no zone of inhibition for that antibiotic. Now, Staph aureus is also being measured for the same antibiotic. The zone of inhibition um, should be measured as a diameter of the circle. Shown here is chloramphenicol in E. coli. The ruler is placed at the beginning of one side of the circle and the diameter of the zone of inhibition is measured. Here, this measurement shows approximately 25 millimeters. Here, vancomycin is being measured. This shows a zone of inhibition of approximately 18. A susceptibility table is then consulted with the different measurements from the zones of inhibition. The susceptibility table is divided into different measurements, resistant, intermediate, and susceptible. The measurement you determined for the zone of inhibition should be looked up for the antibiotic for which you measured. Here is a plate with five different antibiotics. Notice that the zones of inhibition are of different sizes. Now shown are two different ways to measure the zones of inhibition. If a full diameter is not available for measurement, you can measure the radius of the circle. You measure the radius of the circle and multiply this by 2. When measuring the radius instead of the diameter, be sure to measure from the center of the antibiotic disc. Shown here is the zone of inhibition being measured for streptomycin in E. coli. The zone of inhibition equals 16 millimeters. Using the antibiotic resistance table shown above, would you determine E. coli to be resistant, intermediate, or susceptible to streptomycin? Antibiotics are often divided into two different groups, narrow spectrum and broad spectrum. Broad spectrum antibiotics are effective against both gram negatives and gram positives. Narrow spectrum antibiotics are only effective against a few different strains of bacteria. Using the picture shown, would you determine penicillin to be broad spectrum or narrow spectrum? Now shown is a property of some antibiotics known as antagonism. With antagonism, when two antibiotics combine, they neutralize the effects of each other, or one inhibits the effect of the other. Shown here, tetracycline is inhibiting the effect of penicillin. The opposite of this effect, known as synergy, is when two antibiotics combined together have a greater effect than either one does by itself. Here, Pseudomonas E. coli and Staph aureus have all had the same five antibiotic discs placed on each of the plates. Pseudomonas and E. coli are both gram-negative rods. However, Pseudomonas shows high resistance to most of the antibiotics placed on the plate. Shown here is vancomycin in both Staph aureus and E. coli. Vancomycin is a narrow spectrum antibiotic that is effective against gram-positive organisms. Chloramphenicol, a broad spectrum antibiotic, here shows zones of inhibition in Staph aureus and E. coli. However, Pseudomonas, a gram-negative rod similar to E. coli, is resistant to the broad spectrum antibiotic. Antibiotic Susceptibility testing is extremely important in diagnostic laboratories and is used in determining the correct course of treatment for bacterial infections.